Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte RSA Edition. Today is the last day of RSA, and by the way, I'm Corey Knockreiner, and this is Mark Low Liberty. And as I mentioned on the last day, Mark just had his talk. It went great. I loved it, but you don't want to hear me talk about it. Rather, Mark, why don't you summarize for people that missed it just some of the general concepts in your talk and, and sure. how it went? So my talk was on securing the Ethereum blockchain. And if you're not familiar with Ethereum, it is a cryptocurrency slash blockchain technology that's currently number two in terms of market yeah, capital on the one. main markets. It's very popular mostly because it's much more than just Bitcoin, where Bitcoin, you use it to send financial transactions from one person to another. Yeah. Ethereum, on the other hand, has this concept of distributed applications. You can write a full application on the blockchain uh, from anything from another cryptocurrency to something like CryptoKitties, which I talked about <laughs> in my talk. Uh, CryptoKitties, you can think of it like Pokemon blockchain addiction, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where you can breed your Pokemon together and get different colors and different varieties. Uh, we actually purchased a few of these. Yeah, I, I learned shortly before the talk, but not that far. But that apparently you named a Crypto Kitty after me. Yes. So Corey thank Crypto you Kitty. For that. <laughs> yeah. um, so I talked about different vulnerabilities that have occurred and different hacks that have happened on the Ethereum blockchain. We went over the DAO, which was a major attack at the very beginning of Ethereum's days, where yeah. there were up about a, like $170 million or so that was stolen out of this Spark contract, which oh, is man. another name for these applications. And it actually caused the Ethereum community to hard fork at that point, yeah. which split off into Ethereum Classic with the original blockchain, yeah. and the Ethereum blockchain as we know it today, with that hack basically wiped out. Yeah. And there were other attacks I went through. Uh, I get, By the way, hard forks are a big deal because it kind of wipes out the old ledger deal. for the, the new ones. Right? Yeah, we talk about yeah. the immutability of a, a ledger and that you can't go back and change things. But with a hard fork, that is effectively going right. back and changing something yeah. intentionally, and which also means you have to get the community to agree, agree on with it in the first place. Yeah. Uh, I also went over several phishing attacks that resulted in uh, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in losses. Uh, phishing, it turns out, affects blockchain tech too. Yep. Um, and then I went into another major attack where uh, someone managed to steal 150,000 Ether, which is a huge amount of money. Yep. Uh, and then another guy managed to lock up another couple hundred thousand Ether, which is still locked up to this day and time. Wow. Uh, and then I finished the talk by actually giving a fun little puzzle for attendees and really anyone to have yeah. a go at, where I have a intentionally vulnerable smart contract yeah. on the Ethereum network, uh, which I've tweeted out the address. I'm sure Corey will link you guys to it. Absolutely. Uh, That's one of the big points, right? That it, Ethereum's cool. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. We like blockchain and even the idea of running, having applications run in the blockchain is neat, yeah. but it adds new attack surface. Exactly. And just in the same way that normal code, you know, software development mistakes can lead to new issues, you showed how you could create a vulnerable piece of code that ran in their blockchain. Exactly. And so it's a big deal. And by the way, it's kind of funny. I mean, I, I love the idea of Ethereum, but part of the, the value of Bitcoin is the, the crypto and the fact that while there can be metadata people add, you're not really adding code. You're not really no. letting the community introduce vulnerability into kind of a publicly tested crypto algorithm. Ethereum seems a little bit different there. Yeah, it is a full Turing complete system, which you know, in simple terms means you can write a, any application you want on it. Now, obviously there's limitations. It's not yeah. as powerful as a computer, Absolutely. but you could still run applications like crypto. Maybe it's powerful, but slower because it takes a lot of right. distributed slower processing and a lot. Much more expensive. Yeah, something. much more expensive. Exactly. So cool. I, my application, it's, uh, we'll get the link out to you guys and Absolutely. you can find and exploit the intentional vulnerability yeah. in it. You might have to go fast because people that saw the talk first, who knows? No one, no yet. one's. We haven't looked to see if anyone's uh, got the prize, but could happen. If you manage to redeem, there's a function called redeem. If you can redeem a elite amount of coins, <laughs> one three three seven exactly in one transaction, uh, you will automatically earn yourself a bit of ether. So awesome! And I hear the value's gone. gone up, so the price is even yeah, more. The than price we... is worth a bit more than we intended. So cool. good luck. Well, great. We'll post links to that. It was a great talk. Really enjoyed it. Uh, that's it for today's RSA news, and we'll see you next week. See you around.